Hello everyone. We'll be talking in this session about properties of soil. In earlier lecture, how to see the soil as a three-phase system we have seen and also the types of soils that we come across. Here also some photographs which will be showing you a red soil here, a yellow grayish soil is here. Here there is a very familiar black cotton soil cut off and then the soil being used as part of construction. Right here it is used for plinth filling purpose and there is sand also which is also classified as soil technically right so and whatever bricks that are being seen even these are made up of uh, some type of particular soil only so soil comes into picture as far as construction is concerned everywhere so uh, we'll go into the details of what are the different properties of uh, soil that uh, one has to our civil engineer has to know about well go ahead so here there is a list of uh, properties of soil that we are going to study there are 10 properties on the left hand side i've got water content we have defined this water content specific gravity in situ density, grain size analysis, consistency limits, relative density. And then afterwards you got compaction properties, shear strength properties, then consolidation properties and the last one is permeability of the soil. Now what are the different soils that we have to go through? So if you remember we have uh, classified the soils as coarse grain soils and fine grain soils. So these properties which have been listed over here, we have to study for both coarse grain as well as fine grain soils. Now there are, most of them are common to all of uh, both fine grain and then coarse grain. There are some properties which are specifically studied in detail as far as coarse grain soil is concerned or fine grain soil is concerned. Uh, we will see them as and when uh, we come across right now here there is a set of soil on the left hand side which are the first six water content specific gravity in situ density grain size analysis consistency limit and relative density these set of properties are called index properties now what is index property index you know that the books will be having index that is to say if you look at that index you will be coming to know about what is there in the whole book exactly in the same manner the index properties when you study or when you know them you will know everything about uh, soil like how it looks what is its strength where it can be used how it looks what is its strength and then other properties and then it can be used where so these are the things that will be identified quickly if not in full length to some extent by these properties that's why these are called index properties right now there is another set of soil on the right hand side 7 8 9 10 that is compaction properties shear strength consolidation and permeability properties these are the properties which are known as engineering properties also this engineering properties are referred to as mechanical properties or behavioral properties look at the terminology one set is index property that is identification purpose whatever we use index properties here these are performance properties means how the soil behaves under the action of different types of forces maybe physical force maybe gravitational force maybe force due to water all sorts of forces will be coming into action on soils and under the action of these variety of forces how the soil behaves whether it takes the loads uh, sustains that load whether it fails whether it allows the water to pass through there are so many things 
right whether it undergoes uh, uh, deformation these are the properties that will help you in knowing behavior of the soil under the action of different forces that's why these are called engineering properties mechanical properties or also referred to as behavioral properties okay so in this slide what we have uh, uh, studied is there are variety of properties i have listed on the left hand side six and then on the right hand side uh, four it is so uh, written that this set is called engineering property this set is called index property okay so here something more index properties there is one two three four five six the same properties are there here set of index properties now there is one uh, very important thing that one should know is uh, these first three properties like whatever you have water content specific gravity in situ density what they are already you know to some extent water content you know it is weight of water to weight of solids the ratio expressed in percentage specific gravity you might be knowing that it is a ratio of density of particular thing to density of water or it is a weight of a particular material to weight of equal volume of standard material generally water right that is known as specific gravity you have studied in length also in um, fluid mechanics also specific gravity there was a separate chapter which you know otherwise you have to refer to earlier classes or um, details specific gravity is nothing but what you can remember is it's a ratio of densities you can say density of a material to density of water is known as specific gravity in situ density density you know that it is also referred to as mass density that is to say mass per unit volume density in situ in the sense on the site as existing in the field please remember in situ density is nothing but density of the soil as existing in the field as existing in the field before excavation before digging before uh, disturbing the soil naturally in natural state whatever density the soil mass possesses that is known as in situ density these three properties are common to both coarse grained and fine grained soils so they are so common to both coarse grained and fine grained soils now there is a next one which is uh, grain size analysis what is that grain size analysis we will see in detail but in short I will tell you grain size or particle size it is also called particle size analysis or particle size distributions more specific soil consists of smaller particles larger particles and still larger particles you have seen in earlier lectures that it will be having clay size particles silt size particles and then sand size even gravel or even higher size particles so it is a mixture you cannot find only clay size particles somewhere right so whenever you come across a soil on the earth's crust it is a mixture of all part all particles but how is the distribution of particles in that soil whether smaller size particles are more whether bigger size particles are more or uh, is it only bigger size particles or is it only smaller size particle or it is a good mix of all the particles that is what we are going to study in length in grain size analysis so this is studied preferably for coarse grain soils that is what you should remember so this particular property right index property will be there or will be studied in length right for coarse grain soils for fine grain soils also you will be finding out grain size distribution but hardly there is any much of importance or uh, technically the property of the soil will be will not be affected much as far as soil particles uh, smaller size particle distribution is concerned only for coarse grain soils coarse grains means the particles which are 
coarse grain soils coarse fraction is the particles which are more than 0.075 mm or 75 microns so when the soil possesses more than 50% of the soil particles as greater than uh, 0.075 mm we call that as coarse grain soil and for such soils uh, grain size analysis becomes an important property okay next is uh, this is the one which is only for fine, fine grain soils which is called as consistency limits in short again consistency means uh, in the presence of water how the soil behaves whether it will be hard to handle easy to handle nice to handle right good to handle like in the presence of water you know that uh, when you take a soil, soil in hand and then go on adding the water in the beginning it may be dry and then as you go on adding the water it becomes a nice plastic material and then if you add more water it will be almost like a muddy water so uh, how the soil behaves in different water content that is what consistency limits tells and this type of study will be uh, more beneficial if you can study it for uh, fine grain soils okay then comes relative density this relative density in fluid mechanics you might have seen this word relative density it will be synonymous to uh, specific gravity but here in soil mechanics in geotechnical engineering specific gravity is different and relative density is different please make a note of that in in fluid mechanics when we have studied we have used specific gravity as well as relative density synonymously one for the other but in soil mechanics they are not the same relative density is different specific gravity is different so relative density what is it we'll see it in later stage but this is only for coarse grain soils not for uh, fine grain soils okay overall these index properties all these six are index properties which help in classifying and identifying the soils now you can define what are index properties if, if person asks the answer is quite simple the properties which help us in identifying what the soil is what for it can be used how it looks so these are the questions readily answered if we know the name or classification of the soil so uh, index property helps in in identifying and classifying the soil okay that is only for corrosion coarse grain soils so the relative density is uh, used so here we have index properties which help in identifying and classifying the uh, soil okay here are some more properties the second set of properties compaction shear strength consolidation and permeability now i have told you there are these are engineering properties and these are common to both uh, coarse grain soils and then fine grain soils common to both these are also called the behavioral properties engineering or mechanical properties give an idea about behavior of soil in different conditions different conditions is preferably under the action of variety of forces so to say because you have seen that this particular subject is also named as soil mechanics many books are available with the title uh, it is written as i'll try to write here soil mechanics i have explained in earlier class what is mechanics mechanics is nothing but study of forces or effect of study of forces now soil mechanics means it is uh, how the soil behaves under the action of variety of forces that is what it means now these are the properties which help you in identify i mean in in knowing the behavior of the soil under the action of variety of forces so it is a compaction property it is uh, 
shear strength property, it is a consolidation property and permeability property. These are the four important properties which uh, help you in knowing the behavior of the soil under the action of variety of forces. Engineering property they are called, these are common to both the CZ, CZ and FZ soils that is coarse grain and then fine grain soils and the engineering properties are also known as mechanical properties okay here specific gravity of the soils soil solids okay let me make this particular part clear in the beginning right what is meant by soil and what is meant by soil solids now in this picture here whatever figure is shown this is soil because if you cut cut a section of soil you will find particles and then there are uh, spaces in between right these spaces may be filled up with water I will use this color maybe some part of that will be filled up with water all right and then some of them are white ones are nothing but air let us say right so there are particles of soil there is um, water there is also air which is present this is referred to as soil mass so what is the word used it is used as the word is used as soil mass or bulk i'll write it here bulk soil or bulk of soil which is nothing but consisting of uh, solid state particles that is uh, soil solids gaseous part that is air and then um, uh, liquid part that is water all the three phases are present in bulk soil or soil mass so remember the terminology whenever we say soil mass or bulk soil or the word bulk itself it consists of all the three phases right now when we say solids soil solids you have to pick up only the solid particles right and then club all the volume and put them here at one mass right so this is only solid and whatever voids are there they are put up over here if you got small amount of water then i'll have to show a, a small amount of water over here okay if you have the water then again you will be having water which is standing here and the remaining portion is air okay it is a three phase system so to say so you got a solids you got water and then you have got air also now when we refer only soil solids obviously only the particles only right now all this solid did is taken as full one centimeter cube here now there is a information given here just check up it's a hundred percent solid in the sense there is no void in between it is perfect cube of one centimeter one centimeter cube and they have given that weight but it is given in grams so i prefer to call it as mass right it is uh, mass and that is equal to 2.66 grams right quite less it is 2.66 grams per cc we can say the density as so density of this particular solid is 2.66 grams per cc this is soil solids only or solids only now if you take over here right as a section of a soil and then again to understand it in better manner here it is given as only solids and then voids and uh, they have said that 50 percent is solid 50 percent is pores of one centimeter cube right what is the volume of the bulk soil listen that listen to that what is the volume of the bulk soil it is one centimeter cube how much is the weight because it is considered as only air there is no water here so weight of the air is negligibly small total weight was 2.66 here it will be obviously 1.33 grams but it is occupying one centimeter cube over here 
so bulk density becomes 1.33 grams per cc because when it is said as bulk soil it will be consisting of particles as well as whites so this is the natural condition of the soil this is imaginary condition this is not actual condition if you imagine that you crush all the soils together make it into one centimeter cube that will be the one right uh, or you crush all these soils put them in in the form of a full solid then it becomes like this so this particular 100% solid is is an imaginary case when we have section of natural soil it looks like this but to, for the sake of study we put it this way which we know it as three phase system okay we will now go into the details of how specific gravity of soil solids is um, considered here another uh, view of the same skeleton of soil right there are particles uh, of soil another picture with very clearly brown particles all of them crush together to form pure solid without any whites all these white whites are taken together and then put them they are nothing but air the whites which are occupied by the water the blue ones are again clubbed together all of them and then put over here so there is a some amount of water weight of water some amount of volume of water similarly every portion like solid will be having its own weight water will be having its own weight air weight will be negligible right volume wise there will be different volumes now now listen overall if you take weight the total weight divided by total volume because the soil bulk has got so so much of volume now that weight divided by volume gives you bulk density of the soil we have studied this in length but i think it is better if you recall all that right bulk is consisting of all the whites involved or in between the solids okay now i have told you w is the or m is the total mass of the soil m total volume is v if you take ratio of m by v you will be getting what is known as density of soil mass okay here if you want density of solids only then what you have to take is mass of solids only the solids without any voids whatever collection you have done all this is crushed into a solid mass so mass of solid divided by volume of solids only if you take mass of solid divided by volume of solids then you get density of solids only there is a huge difference between uh, density of solids and density of soil mass i once again repeat density of soil when we say we consider the whole thing wherein mass of solids mass of water mass of air everything included and divided by the total volume that is density of soil soil density of bulk soil density of soil mass it is called as but if you take individual particles put them in packed form and then it has got a some mass and some volume if you take the ratio of the mass of solids divided by volume of solids what you get is uh, density of solids only obviously because there is a smaller volume and larger weight the density of soil solids will be much much greater than the density of soil mass <coughs> if you because if you take the mass of soil right it will be consisting of course weights uh, weight of soil um, and mass of solids plus, plus mass of water plus hardly there is any contribution of mass of air but in the denominator you will be having total volume which is a bigger volume volume including volume of solids volume of water volume of air also 
so the denominator term will be much bigger because of that the density of soil will be comparatively less than density of solids only okay here we will study in, in length about specific gravity of soil solids so how to determine the specific gravity of soil solids it is soil solids the method is called as pyknometer method and it is is 2720 part 3 1987 which has given the procedure for determining specific gravity of soil solids now what is specific gravity specific gravity of soil solids is defined as mass of soil solids to mass of equal volume of water the standard material of reference is water that's why you have to take equal volume of water what is the mass of that volume of water that you have to keep it in the denominator numerator is having mass of soil i mean mass of soil solids so the ratio becomes specific gravity obviously specific gravity will not be having any units of measurement now what are the apparatus required pyknometer what you see here in photographs is a pyknometer balance to get the mass of the materials at, at an accuracy of 1 gram then you require distilled water I put it as just water and then the important thing is the den specific gravity the specific gravity that you are trying to find will be of some soil or some soil solids that you have to dry it in oven and then take it for the test that is what it means okay now here if you just look at what is pyknometer it is a glass jar roughly one liter in capacity the top of the glass is slightly in a different manner you can just see here there is a brass cone like arrangement or uh, copper cone like it has to be placed on top of it and then above that you place this uh, rubber ring and then put the stopper and rotate it so that this is quite nicely squeezed and then no water will be leaking off because what happens is when you put the water there is a uh, chance that it leaks here and there now that leaking has to be stopped that's why there is a uh, rubber ring now why the shape of the pyknometer top is made in the form of cone the question right for this the answer is something like this suppose this top is made flat right when you conduct the experiment what you do is you put the soil and then put the water and try to remove the air bubble now when you remove the air bubble the air bubbles come to the surface and then if this surface is quite flat they will be just sitting on the top i'll try to draw in the form of a sketch let's say this is the top right the air bubbles which come and then may, maybe they will be sticking to this now how do you bring them out suppose on the top also you provide a, a ring like that smaller ring over here now how do you push these air bubbles to ex escape from the hole that you provide that is a big question now why at all you provide a stopper with a uh, with a top so that you will not be having a smaller hole you will be having a bigger hole so to say you don't have the stopper at all just you use it as it is now if you use it as it is the water that is standing on top on top will be having a meniscus right that meniscus volume a small volume over there we will be missing because of that what happens is accuracy of whatever specific gravity that we are calculating will be less so when you have a container top so when you put the water full will be seeing that water will be put full now what happens is this much of volume of uh, water will be missing from this 
but when it is made like this like uh, a small hole in the top the amount of or accuracy of uh, meniscus will be quite less or error because of the meniscus will be quite less so this is the reason why the particular shape of uh, <coughs> top will be there for pycnometer okay here uh, i have given the steps specific gravity of uh, soil uh, solids we'll see clean and dry the pycnometer and take the mass of pycnometer as m1 schematically i have drawn drawn it as just one cylinder and this represents pycnometer without anything inside that without anything in the sense of course air is present and take the mass in air and that is m1 now take about 200 to 400 grams of oven dried soil sample passing through 4.75 mmc transfer it to the pycnometer find the mass of pycnometer and the soil soil is soil solids and that is m2 the third step fill the pycnometer with distilled water about half level mix thoroughly using glass rod to remove the air bubbles so when you have soil solids you fill only half of it and then stir it properly because the soil will be having a lot of uh, dry voids or air voids because it is a dry soil all that water has to escape that is the idea that's why thoroughly mix it with a glass rod preferably glass rod so that no water or soil particles will be coming out along with the rod if you use any other thing there is there is a chance that the particles will be coming out uh, sticking to that stick but in this case glass rod there nothing that sticks and then you will not be able to take even water also to some extent right now put the top and fill the pycnometer completely means it is half full now you place that conical shape of uh, top and then a rubber ring and then screw it properly tightly and then you go on putting the water from the pipette right completely with distilled water using pipette because pouring the water pouring the water inside this after putting the stopper will be less because of that use the pycnometer and fill this top right so once you fill it properly you will be getting or you should get what is known as m3 right now take the mass of the pycnometer and uh, the contents contents in the sense soil plus water that is m3 right and then uh, of course this shaking has to be done a bit uh, earlier after putting the whole water after putting the whole water you need not touch it you have to fill the water right up to the top and then take the mass that is m3 the last step now empty the pycnometer thoroughly clean it fill the pycnometer fully with only distilled water and take the mass that is m4 in the sense you have to remove all this soil and water mess right and then fill it with only water inside right up to the brim of that uh, uh, pycnometer top right then you take the mass that is m4 now if you have all these things we can put them as observations in a table when you conduct an experiment mass of empty pycnometer as m1 mass of uh, the pycnometer plus oven dried soil sample that is m2 that is shown here then mass of pycnometer plus oven dried soil sample plus full water means in addition to that you have got water also so many grams and then after cleaning everything fill it with water then take the mass mass of pycnometer plus full water so m1 m2 m3 m4 there are four masses that will be getting the mass of dry soil solids the difference of these two m2 is this minus m1 this mass of uh, jar or pycnometer goes off you will be left with only mass of solids mass of dry solids into minus m1 
Now mass of equal volume of water. So here M4 minus M1, what we have done, we'll, we'll see here. So that it will be easy to understand or remember, so to say. M4 minus M1 gives you what? M4 minus M1. M4 is full of water. M1 is empty. Now, if from M4, if you subtract M1, we will be getting mass of only the water which is fully filling the container. That is what M2 minus M1. I mean uh, M4 minus M1 gives. Now what is M3 minus M2? M3 is this. M2 is this. So if you subtract from here to this, the glass jar or pyknometer goes, cancels. The final soil particles will also be removed because already that weight, weight is taken. Now when you subtract, what you will be getting is this extra water apart from the soil surrounding water that will be there that will be seen here. So in M3 minus M2 the pyknometer cancels off, the soil cancels off, you will be left with only the water it is in between. Now this water if you subtract from this soil, this water if you subtract from this particular water you will be getting the water which is trying to fill the space of soil. The water which is trying to fill the space or volume of soil. So this term gives you that volume. Whatever uh, this term is there, this is nothing but mass of water equal to the volume of soil right now as per the definition of specific gravity mass of soil on the top divided by mass of equal volume of water so this term this term gives you mass of equal volume of water equal to what equal to the volume of soil so that gives you that now when you take the ratio like that obviously what you will be getting is specific gravity of soil solids only right it is not bulk density or bulk volume it is volume of soil solids soil solids only that's why it is specific gravity of soil solids only okay this with uh, one numerical example here so whenever you solve the problem better you wrote down the things in in schematic diagram like that this represents m1 empty container empty magnometer this is along with the dry soil and soil with water thoroughly mixed and full of water right clear everything and pyknometer is fully filled up with water that way so m1 m2 m3 m4 all are given here and uh, specific gravity equation is already mentioned in this right m2 minus m1 divided by m4 minus m1 minus m3 minus m2 now using that if you calculate 2.62 would be the uh, first trial value 2.54 second third one is 2.52 now here mass of empty container three different um, pyknometers are taken at one point and then you can see a slight difference would be seen here right mass of pyknometer plus tri soil that is m2 28.2 27.5 27 27.8 then you you know that procedure you have to put the water and remove the air bubbles and take the mass m3 then clear the contents and then fill it with only water then take the mass that is m4 using that equation when you calculate first trial gives you 2.62 second trial 2.54 third trial 2.52 uh, when almost similar values are there better you take the ratio and i mean uh, average and then put it as the final result so 2.56 would be the specific gravity of soil solids okay that is the procedure Thank you. We'll stop here.